This is starting from scratch in a Windows XP SP3 virtual machine. And I'm going to uh, install some applications first. I've made a little folder for a project. Not that one. That one. And I've got three applications in there. First one I'm going to put in is uh, the Codec XFID. Uh, you can download from uh, Free Codex if you hunt around for it. Just accept the defaults on this one. Next one is going to be the AVSynth frame server. Okay, that. Okay, that. Now then, the, the only thing you can deselect here really is the documentation if you don't want want it. Uh, just go for next. Accept the defaults again, and it runs through. You can finish it. Finally, I'm going to install. AVD Mux. Now this is version 2.5.2 which is not the most current one. Um, I've got a feeling that the most current one is slightly dodgy. Make sure that this last item, the AVSynth proxy, is installed. Don't want that. You can you can get older versions if you look at um, www.videohelp.com in the tools section. Uh, it lists AV, DMUX, and older versions. That's it. Finish it. Now shut down Windows and restart to uh, get everything working. When it started up again. We'll go and start AVD Max, and I'm going to do a little bit of pre-processing here. These video files are from a point-and-shoot camera, so they're in um, motion JPEG format, which isn't very useful for this. Uh, so here's the. Uh, background and since I've got to convert them to uh, uh, an XFID AV I'll do a little bit of pre-processing and in this case this is going to be the inset and as you can see it's the wrong orientation and it's too big it's too long so I'm going to set a length to save I'm going to go down to the XVID section and I'm going to go into configure because by default it's it's not the most useful uh, setting for editing. It is for final video, 300 distance between iframes is great for final but not for editing so I'm going to change that to 10. Everything else we can save. Now I'm going to go into uh, the filters. I'm going to go now. I'm going to rotate it. Well, first of all, I want to resize it. Uh, not that one. That one. And I'm just going to cut it in half for this example. So that's 320. And it automatically goes to 240. And we'll OK that. So that's the resize. Now I want to rotate it. Rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll say OK. Close that. And I'm going to save it into the project folder. And for reasons that'll be, you see later on, I'm going to save it with a very strange name of 
B Heavy That's done Now I'm going to open the main background video which is also motion JPEG and we'll have to set one bit so I'm going to put in a uh, a little bit before the inset so I'm going to save the bit before the inset if I can find it, save video I'm going to call this one 1.av, don't forget the extension Now I'm going to save the middle bit, which is going to be the background for the picture in the picture. So I want this 10 seconds in length, same as the, uh, the picture in the picture. I'm going to save that. And this time I'm going to call it A.AV. Save that one. And finally, the remainder, which is going to be the end. I've got a one. Sometime I'm going to have a middle, but I, this is the end, so I'm going to call it um, 3.av. Now I'm going to call it 3.av. Now then, so I've got AV Demux minimized here, and I've got Notepad as well, and I'm going to look at a file in the project folder and it's called uh, pip av, avs, dot avs. Uh, notice the first line has got a hash in it, it's just a comment you'll see why we've got the strange names now clip1 av source is a dot av note the quotes around the file name Clip 2, AV source is B.AV, again in quotes, and then I've got a dot add border um, 222, and then a very long number there, which is actually white. If you want black, it's zero. Uh, and then the final bit that does the work, overlay, clip 1, which is the background, clip 2, which is the picture in the picture. X and Y are the position of the um, picture in the picture, so you can adjust those if you want to, and then blend and opacity is zero, is uh, no transparency. So I'm now going to go to uh, AVD Mux and AVS Proxy, start it up. Now I'm, I'm already there, so uh, but you would normally browse for it. And, select it. And the one thing to note here is make sure this one is unticked uh, otherwise it's allowed to crash. AVSynth is still a little bit flaky at times. Anyway that's that. We can uh, create the proxy and uh, open AVDMux. Now I'm going to go to connect to the proxy. Doesn't look very much, but it is actually it is actually uh, 
uh, AV synth is taking the two files and mixing them together. So we'll stop that and we'll save that as now we see the uh, the numbering system because I'm going to use it, going to call this one 2.av which is the middle section. Save that. And we can close it. An error message from AV Synth. Don't worry about it. It happens all the time. Um, now I'm going to go to AVD Mux and I want to join these three clips together. And we're back in uh, regular mode there. Notice so uh, we had um, the default settings. Now, in uh, Windows Explorer, I'm just going to drag those three files in, and they open automatically. Now, if we play this, uh, you can see that uh, we've got the bit with the picture in the picture in the middle, and we can uh, add some sound now. Up to now, we've had no sound at all. Go to the main track. Uh, go for external mp3, open a file, could be music or it could be a commentary, and now we can save it, I'm going to call it final, really original uh, naming conventions here. And eventually it saves, and we can have a look at it, view the final result. So closing down AVD Mux, going to VLC, And that's the picture in the picture. It's a bit jerky here, but that's uh, more due to my screen capture than anything else.